Hey, I'm Justin from Portland CNC. We do custom woodworking and CAD and CAM training. Today I want to show you some simple fixturing tools that you can make for your Shapoko or Nomad. Stick around and I'll show you how to make these parts in Carbide Create. We've outfitted our Shapoko XL bed with a fixture plate that has a grid of quarter 20 inserts to make fixturing stock easy. We use these strap clamps and thumb screws we designed to fixture parts easily to our Shapoko XL. These thumb screws help make fixturing toolless, as you don't need a socket or a wrench, but just your thumbs to tighten down your clamps. These clamps and thumb screws were designed in Fusion 360, and today we'll go through the design, cam, and carbide create, and making these thumb screws on our Shapoko XL. Alright, we'll start in Fusion 360. If you don't have it, it's free to use as a hobbyist. We'll provide these CAD files in the description so you can make these thumb screws for yourself. You can find many more Fusion 360 and CNC project videos on our channel, Portland CNC. Anyway, on to the design. Opening up the file, we'll run through the design timeline at the bottom quickly. This is a simple part with only a couple features. I'll open up the sketch. The outside is a wavy cross shape outline that's one and a half inches across. The inside is a pocket that's the perfect press fit size for a quarter 20 hex head bolt and a through hole that's 260. The other two items on the timeline are extrusions, one up, one down. The first extrusion is negative 0.08 or 80 thou down. The second extrusion is 150 thou or 0 0.150 inches and will join it to the first extrusion, making one solid object. So that's our design. Since we're going to use Carbide Create for CAM, we'll need to export this to something Create can use. So we'll make a DXF. You might be wondering why I spend the time to 3D model this part. Well, it's not needed per se, but I find a quick 3D model can help you see issues you might run into ahead of actually making the part. Fusion has great CAM tools also, so at some point you may want to try those out and your part is already set up for CAM and Fusion 360 at this point. To export the DXF, Right click on the sketch and then select Save as DXF. Name that and put it in a place where we can find it easily later. Next, let's open Carbide Create. I'm using the Pro version, but you don't need any of the Pro features for what we'll do. Let's set up the file. As a reminder, you can get these files in the description of the video. The stock size will be 8 inches in X and 4 in Y. On thickness, we'll set it to 235 for the stock we're using, or that's quarter inch Baltic bridge plywood. I'd recommend measuring your own stock with a caliper to confirm though. Set the zero height to bottom. The toolpath zero or XY zero to bottom left. And we're using hardwood as the material and you can choose your machine and then set your attract height. I'm using 0.5 inches. Next, let's import our DXF thumb screw. Click the import button. Find the file we just exported from Fusion 360. It's pretty obvious that the scale is off here. That's an easy fix though. Select the vectors and choose group vectors. We don't want those to scale at different sizes. We'll want to scale those objects next. So select the scale button. We know that the outside dimensions are 1.5 inches, so that's an easy fix. A quick note here, Fusion exports files using the units you're working with, and Carbide Create uses metric. If we switch the units to metric in Fusion before exporting, you won't have an issue with scaling, but I thought it was worth showing how to scale something quickly in Create. Let's move the first part to 2x and 3y. You want to choose the center anchor in the move dialog. To make another part, select that part, click the edit menu, and then copy. Also command or control C works as keyboard shortcuts too. Continue to do this to create a top row of three parts spaced two inches center to center. To speed this up, you can then group the whole top row, copy that, and move it to 4x and 1y with the center anchor selected again. Now that the parts are in order, let's ungroup them for easier toolpath selection coming up.
Let's move over to the Toolpath tab in Carbide Create. Our first operation is a 2D pocket to cut the through hole. Select pocket and we'll want to use the number 102 1 8 inch tool. Step over is at 0 0.062 and depth per pass at 0 0.050. The plunge we bumped up to 10 inches per minute and the feed rate at 55 inches per minute. Set the start depth at 0 and max depth will be 0.2358. Then select all the innermost circles by holding shift for our tool path. The next operation is also a pocket. Same tool, but slightly more aggressive on the step down at 0 0.062. Do 10 on the plunge again and 55 on feed. The max step for this operation should be 0 0.150. Then shift select the hex shapes and push OK. The last operation is a 2D contour. We'll use this to cut out the parts. Edit the tool. We'll set the step over to 0.118, the depth per pass to 0 0.065, the plunge rate at 10 again, and the feed rate at 55. The max depth will be at the stock bottom or 0.235. The offset direction should be outside. Then we'll shift select all the outside contours. When I edit the tabs, I seem to have an issue unless I push OK to confirm the tool path, and then it lets me do it when I edit it again. So I put in the tabs like this, three per each one, and I'm setting those at 300 wide and 0 0.090 tall. And that's it for tool paths. So all that's left is just to simulate and post our code. Click show simulation here and check out what it looks like just to make sure it's what you think. You should always simulate before you post code. Just saves you uh, many errors and potential expensive problems. Let's save our G code. Give it a name. I'm gonna call this thumb screws 6x. Choose our post processor that's right for your machine. Change the output units. Push OK. And just like any good baking show, I've already got the ingredients ready with some TV magic. Our stock is clamped down with our strap clamps and we've set the Z0 at the bed and the XY0 at the bottom left corner. If you use another hold down method, make sure to confirm your clearance height is correct in the job setup for track height. I used half an inch because that's what's right for what I'm gonna do strap clamps, and I've already made a couple of these thumb screws so you can see how easy they are to use. If you didn't know, you can easily pull McMaster parts straight into Fusion 360. Here's a quick example of pulling in a quarter 20 two inch long hex bolt and putting a joint in so we can see exactly how it fits in our thumb screw. Anyway, let's tighten down these clamps and run these parts.
There's a little bit of fuzz from the upcut tool. A quick tip to clean that up, grab a sanding block and sand it before you destock the parts. You can use your fixturing to keep it from moving and it's much easier than sanding each part individually. You can see how quickly you can clamp or unclamp without any tools needed. Not bad. Let's get these de-stocked on the bandsaw. A chisel or a multi-tool works great too. Now's a good time to do a little more sanding. It's a bit tougher to sand once you've got the bolts inserted. Once you've got them cleaned up, find a piece of scrap material and a hammer. I don't have any of those fancy non-mooring acetyl face hammers, but that would have been a nice here. A small dead blow might work too, but I opted for the good old 16 ounce steel hammer. It does a little bit more damage to the wood part, but it's on the bottom side and nobody will see it. Essentially, we're just taking a quarter 20 hex bolt that's one and a half to two and a half inches long and pressing the bolt head into the thumb screws we made. We designed these hex pockets to be a little undersized compared to the bolt head, that way it will smash its way in there for a better hold. Once you get it smashed down, you'll get a nice fit like this, and that hex head is going nowhere. You can use a couple of your six to do different lengths of hex head bolt. It's all the same. They should fit just the same as long as they're quarter 20. That way you can quickly clamp up whatever you're working on if it's a little thicker or thinner on the bed. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested, look below for links to download these files and check out our channel for more projects. Thanks.